The next talk, Interaction Design with Polymer Animations and Ember.js. So this has actually been the last uh, kind of like week and a half, a couple weeks. So this is all kind of constantly evolving and changing. Might be a little premature to give a talk on it. So this is kind of a more high level overview. I'm not gonna dig really deep into the code. Um, right now it's still kind of some dirty hacks to get it working. Uh, but once you get it working, it's, it's pretty amazing. So the backstory, um, kind of, kind of the, the impetus for this um, is a little side project I've been working on. Um, the idea is basically kind of like an Uber, Lyft, Airbnb for travel guides. Um, so I've, I've been able to travel to a lot of different countries and looking back, maybe the best experiences have been when I've had a friend that's like grown up in a place, I found an amazing guide in a certain location, or uh, randomly met really cool people, which you know you can't always count on. So the tech requirements, um, to prototype mobile and web app with three main requirements. One, build cross-platform mobile phone uh, mobile phone apps from a single code base. So the idea is basically, I'm a single person and want to leverage my time as much as I possibly can. And I, I really feel like uh, web technologies and specific implementations with certain optimizations are now able to compete um, with, native, with native applications, um, or at least get really close. So the dream is to have a single code base um, and a tool like Ember CLI, which is a, a built tool for Ember applications, where you can basically have one code base and maybe some different modules, and with uh, just a couple keystrokes, you can output to all these different platforms. So you can, you can output to the web, you can output to iOS, you can output to Android, and uh, with Cordova, I think it supports up to, to eight different platforms, like Windows and a lot of other things that nobody really uses, but uh, you know, it's good to have it in your back pocket. So yeah, and the requirement to build this with, uh, with web technologies. So I'm a big Ember fan. So Ember, HTML, CSS, SVG. Um, and one thing is that I really wanted to make an interesting like interaction design. I really wanted to use this project to kind of push forward my skills with interaction design and uh, kind of put the, take those to the limit of so yeah, so, so basically a preface to this, uh, the Polymer Ember integration is extremely experimental, rapidly changing on the bleeding edge, uh, but once you get it working, it's, it's pretty amazing. So I first started with, with Liquid Fire. This was, this was a few weeks ago. It's kind of the new hotness in the, the Ember world for animations. Um, so some things I didn't like about it, it's, it's based on um, Velocity.js. So, so David um, and Cameron were talking about uh, jQuery anime and Velocity is basically a rewrite. It's supposed to be a lot more performant, uh, but it's still JavaScript animations. And CSS is is always going to be more uh, performant than JavaScript. So um, so it's based on that, and it basically provides a, like a, like an in Ember DSL for um, composing animations. And uh, um, and I just I don't know like there were. I started to get into it. It was fairly easy to get up, up and running and do some simple animations right away. Um, but when I tried to do more complex stuff, um, it just it just got a little messy. And also the the documentation wasn't very good. But I did like that they had a pretty smart way to um, basically in uh, Ember routes when they, when you transition between views, when you go from one route to another route, it destroys the outgoing view and creates the incoming view. Um, and it, they, they, did a, they had a pretty smart approach to delaying the destruction of the outgoing view so that that view could be animated out and then it would be destroyed once that animation was complete. Um, I also kind of liked, they did a, a state machine style um, transition map for, for declaring animations between states and between routes. So inner material design. Uh, so material design for, if you guys don't know, or haven't checked it out yet, it's Google's vast, expansive push in creating their own unified design language between all of their own products. Um, so as they said, we challenged ourselves to create a visual language for our users that synthesizes the classic principles of good design with the innovation and possibility of technology and science. This is material design. So um, checking it out initially, I wasn't a huge fan of some of the aesthetics, um, but uh, one thing that really struck me um, was this concept they had of visual continuity. So transitioning between two visual states should be smooth, appear effortless, and above all, provide clarity to the user, not confusion. 
A well-designed transition does the heavy lifting and enables a user to clearly understand where their attention should be focused. A transition has three categories of elements. Incoming elements, whether newly generated or translated into the scene, these items need to be introduced or reestablished. Outgoing elements, elements that are no longer relevant to the new context, must be removed from the scene in an appropriate manner. And shared elements, elements that persist from the starting to the ending state of a transition. They can be as subtle as a single icon or as dominant as a gallery image that grows to fit the screen. And to kind of show you um, what they call meaningful, meaningful transitions. So as you can see, when you go from one state, which is kind of an index view, to the show state of that, instead of a jarring experiment, the experience where you click something and then all of a sudden it just loads right in your face, this provides kind of a smooth transition and a sense of context. And when you click on something, it, it smoothly translates to your face, and you, you have an understanding of where you are in the app. And then if you exit out of that or go back, then it'll smoothly go back into the place from where it came. And also this example, it's a very similar thing. So you see the, uh, the guy's avatar and name, that's what's shared between states, and that kind of smoothly animates up to its position within the next state. This, this struck me as, as um, just a really intriguing concept. And the thing was, that when I was sitting down to actually think about how I, how I would implement something like this, it just seemed insanely complicated and, and difficult. Like if you click on any one of these contacts, all of these start from a different place in the original app. So if you click down here, then it will have to animate up to the same position as if you clicked up there. And then when you do the reverse animation, it'll have to go from that place back to its other place on the page. And to do that for every single element or just is kind of like a mind-boggling, difficult problem. Like if you're someone like Google, you know, you can stick 20 genius in, like programmers on it and, and probably figure out a solution for that. But if you know, you're, you're one guy sitting with your laptop, that's, that's a pretty daunting task. So then uh, Crazy Dave who was actually gonna give a talk tonight but got called away on a business meeting. Um, he was kind of going through some of the, the Polymer docs and um, he found the, this concept of hero animations. So, so the Polymer Animation Library, you can do kind of the, the basic, all the basic transitions, animations, and they have their own kind of, of uh, DSL to compose, you know, the different slide in, slide out, slide up, slide down, um, you know, translating certain elements from one, one place to another. But the concept of hero animations is, is I think, like this, this hidden magic. And basically what it does is you dictate the starting point of a certain element in one, uh, in one kind of state. And then you dictate the ending point of that same element or what that element will become in the next state, and it takes care of the entire innovation before you. So all of a sudden, it's like, holy shit, like, if, if I have a list of different contacts, if I have this entire list that's animating, now all I have to do to get this beautiful smooth animation between everything else is define a hero ID on each of these and define the end hero ID and it will take care of everything for you. So now this kind of opens up a whole world of really exciting animations and transitions and interaction design that would, before, before a library like this, would take an insane amount of time and work. And now you almost get it for free. So yeah, this basically fueled like a mad rush. Uh, Dave and I got pretty excited about this, and we thought, hey, we're gonna try to integrate this with Ember. We're, um, we're working on uh, a new Ember app at work, and uh, I'm working on a couple you know, projects at home. So we started to kind of dig into it, and we are just getting like hit in the face with, with errors kind of left and right. There were a lot of issues with the structure that core animated pages, needed certain elements of the DOM to, to be in, and the way that Ember kind of handles that same thing. Also, um, Ember currently uses jQuery to update the DOM, and uh, Polymer has its own binding library, node.bind, and they were basically conflicted. And uh, Ember has this project called HTML bars, 
which has been in the works for a long time, and it's, it's gonna ship probably in the next couple months, um, but a lot of those problems will go away. It, it will no longer uh, use jQuery in order to update the DOM. It's just gonna spit out like raw DOM nodes, very similar to how Polymer does. So they'll, they'll basically be compatible out of the box. Um, without digging into too much of the code, uh, Core Innovative Pages expects kind of a main container component that has a selected attribute that's equal to the index of the currently selected child view. Um, all Core Innovative Pages children need to be section elements, and Core Innovative Pages also need child elements to be in the DOM at the same time in order to successfully transition elements. So usually, if, if you look at some of the Polymer um, Core Innovative Pages examples, they basically have all of the, the various children elements in the DOM at the same time and don't do a whole lot of like dynamic things. And, and Ember, everything is dynamic. So on the Ember side, the Ember router has a concept of routes that wire up controllers, views, and models in specific states of your app and inject them into outlets. And just a quick Ember rundown, um, just to give a sense of context for people that haven't used Ember. Um, Ember routes manage application state, which is like the backbone of your, your application. Routes wire models with controllers, components, views, and templates. An Ember model defines object classes and attributes that you want to persist back to a server. Ember controllers decorate your models with display logic, and templates contain markup and get their properties from controllers. An Ember view is a container that renders a template and handles advanced user interaction logic, so things like drag and drop, et cetera. Um, and an Ember component is an isolated sandbox Ember view that is built for reusability. So Ember and Polymer Animations, so basically we hacked together a solution that creates a new Ember outlet. Um, so the outlet is basically a, a helper, um, the, the traditional Ember outlet. So we basically created our own Polymer outlet helper. Um, it's essentially, it itself is a core animated pages uh, Polymer component. And, it's, and then it, it basically, it's a helper that injects a container view um, that delays the destruction of an outgoing child view until the Polymer animation completed call, callback is fired. And all Ember route views are set to, so all the, the kind of like the, the route parent views are set to a tag name of section and in order to have them gel with the, the structure that, that Polymer anticipates. And basically we manually set the core animated pages selected attribute to one less than the child view's length to properly transition. And we do this because once an animation happens, it's completed, it fires a callback, and that tells Ember to destroy that view. And now, now the, uh, um, the parent outlet, which is also a core animated pages uh, component, only has one child view. So we're constantly kind of like cycling in and out views, which is delaying them long enough in order for the transition to complete. So what's the payoff from all this? Here are a couple, this is just the basic kind of back and forth, so there's nothing that, all that exciting about this one. Transitioning between these states, you, you define each of these as separate hero elements, and as they transition, I'll just play one more time. The one on the left is moving left and right, so this one I just, in order to show kind of the complexity of things you can do, it's moving left and right, the animations in the background, so things are going out, things are coming in, and then the elements that persist from one state to another remain on the page or are animated to their place on the next page. And you know, with time, I'm obviously gonna spend more time on this and, and make it a lot smoother, but this just shows you, this is, this is basically, with very little work, um, you can do some really complex, pretty interesting things. And yeah, also what's cool is it's using the browser's back button in that. Um, so that, that kind of, you get that out of the box with Ember. So what's really great is when you're in, in kind of deeply nested routes and situations, and somebody just hits the back button, it'll play the, the reverse of whatever animation that, um, that you did in order to get into that state. What's really cool in certain situations is, is card views. So if you, have, if you have rows of different card views that are in different situations, so let's say we have like three card views right here, and we click this one, and that card view expands to the header in the next section. So you click it, it'll animate up and expand into the next section. Then if you go back to the previous page, it'll shrink from that into the card view. And it's amazing because, you know, with Ember and single page apps, once 
you know, it, it's funny because now when I go back to uh, like traditional server rendered apps and I click something and then like I wait and then like something pops up and then I click something and then I wait and then it pops up, it almost feels broken. It almost feels like this, like what, what's wrong with this? This, you know, whereas, you know, three, four years ago, every single site was like that. People started throwing in a little Ajax here and there while, where you had like instant interactions. But now, after doing things at Ember for so long and living in that world, where almost everything you do in a site is, is almost instant, um, that seems broken. What was amazing about this is once you start putting in really smart, and, and they can be even very subtle, like interaction design elements that transition in this way, once you take them out or you go back to an app you did before, it feels broken. So I really feel like this is going to enable kind of a generation of web apps that are gonna be able to compete um, with native apps. And it provides this kind of design paradigm and this, this interaction design language that, that once you kind of try it out and once you start using it, it's almost impossible to go back because it feels broken. Just as I feel like when I go from um, client rendered apps to server rendered apps. So yeah, so words of caution, like I said, I didn't, I didn't really go too far into the code because um, a lot of this is, is very experimental and, and changing pretty rapidly. Um, what the good news is um, with Ember, this, this new templating language, uh, Polymer, is going to basically out of the box um, work perfectly with, with uh, the new Polymer elements. So um, it will make a lot of the kind of like dirty hacks that we have to do right now um, work kind of magically together. So I think that's about it. Um, yeah, anybody have any questions? Yeah, um, when you have these hero animations and you have a view leaving the screen, another one coming in and one's being destroyed, how, how is that, how are those elements moving in the DOM? Are they, like, do you have those common elements actually moving from one view to the other, or so, how does that work? So basically this, like, I, like, I wish I had the, uh, the desktop one because it's a little bit easier to see in that in that situation. But what ends up happening is um, if you have so let's say for example you have a card view that that is uh, I don't know like 200 by 300 pixels right here, and then it expands out to in the next section it's like 800 by 300 pixels. So what you see if like when you initially do it, depending on what you define as the actual hero item in both in both cases. Um, is once you transition into the next phase, the, the incoming hero, hero animation, or hero element, basically um, finds the, the spot on the page that the outgoing one, where that was, and then it sticks it there and then provides the animation to where it is on the next page. So it's basically the incoming element is the one that is being animated, but it's being animated from the position Hero, if that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else? Cool. Well, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. And thanks again, Team Martin.